Um, we be, get, we'll get back to being serious for a moment. We've just been talking about the law of signatures and uh, brain food and people with dementia don't have to keep their dementia and they don't have keep having to have drugs. Um, I have a friend by the name of Don Tolman. He, back in 1986, I think it was, published the results of a, a trial, if you'd like to call that, of about 100 people with um, grades 1 to 3 dementia. It was published in the New, Eng New England Journal of Medicine, I believe. And basically what happens is that um, he took all these people off every drug that they had been placed on and he gave them a number of things to do, such as to suck on some raw, unadulterated rock salt, sea salt, uh, and drink water throughout the day. Every time they were thirsty sucking on the salt, they'd drink some water. He gave them sunlight, lots of sunlight, whole body sunlight. He gave them a, um, a raw food diet. He got them eating uh, walnuts and I think pecan nuts and brain food such as food with a head on it. That's like cauliflower and broccoli, uh, yeah, broccoli and other things like that and carrot. It's good for your eyes, so the eyes are part of the thing, so I presume you did some carrot as well. Anyway, the bottom line is, the gist of it is that within three months, 99 out of 100 people were cleared clinically normal. So, that's just a little aside and uh, <laughs> You can look up Don Tolman on the internet if you wanted to learn more about him. Amazing gentleman and um, a fountain of ancient wisdom. All right, what we're about to do here is to tube feed a, yellow t a red tailed black copper tube by the name of Billy in this case. So you saw me do a crop wash, maybe. Maybe you saw the video where I do a crop wash. This time, uh, instead of sucking stuff out, we're going to be putting stuff in. So we'll film it from this side, perhaps this time. Or would you prefer to film over my shoulder? That's good like that. Hmm? That's good, good that way. That's fine like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So first of all, I'm getting my grip on the head. I put my ring finger behind the head to act as a pivot. I take, I secure his head firmly, and I put my thumb on the lower beak here and I put my forefinger on the upper beak there where he can't quite bite me and if he tries to pull his head back or forward I've got my little finger at this ring finger at the back acting as a security agent for me so he doesn't slip his head out of my hand. I'm introducing the crop tube from his left side through the gap that I've created by pushing on his upper beak and his lower beak to create a scissor bill effect and then I have to go over the back of his tongue somewhere here right we're going over the back of his tongue we're going taking the end of the tube across to the right side of his neck avoiding the windpipe and I'm stretching his neck up and I'm just letting this there it goes I'm just tapping it and that's not I'm just showing you that I'm not using force it's basically a gravity feed I need to check that the tube is not going down the windpipe so I check here on the side of his neck just here and I can feel the tube and the windpipe as separate structures. If I couldn't do that, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm passing the tube right down to the base of his neck. I know it's in the esophagus. I haven't pushed it through the wall of the esophagus. I'm now going to tube feed him. So here we go. While we're doing this, we're watching the lower part, or we're watching his mouth for any reflux coming up. We're doing it slowly. And we've already established that there was hardly any food in his crop in an earlier stage of palpation. You don't tube feed a bird that already has a full crop. You don't put 10 mils into a bird that already has 5 mils in it. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we're in the middle of filming right at the moment, darling, but I'll ring you back shortly. Yeah, the bird's very, very, very sick. Critical, critically ill, okay? So, you know, I'll probably about another 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, bye. 
Okay, we shall continue. We shall continue. <laughs> so we're gradually putting down the. Um, we're just introducing the food slowly. Now there are other things that I'm doing at the same time as this. This bird is very dull, very calm, and so forth. But I always ask for help, and I always extend by intent calming to the birdie to minimise struggles and to minimise all that. Okay, we've done that. We've taken when we took the tube out. I took it out quite quickly, as you might have noticed. But I took it out in an upright position. I didn't take it out at an angle. I took it in line with his neck, so everything is straight. Normally a cockatoo's neck has got an S-bend in it and so I've had to stretch his neck gently but firmly and hold it in a position there. And the other things that I'm doing that you may not have seen on camera is that I've got his tail and the towel locked between my legs in this case. So normally I do it under, locked in here and I'm just showing and this is another technique where I've freed myself up and to make it a bit easier for filming. So I hope that helps you. And then, of course, we finish with some TLC. I keep emphasising that we're dealing with sentient beings, their embodiments of love, of the same love that we've been created from, perhaps. It's a little bit of spirituality, perhaps. Um, but anyway, um, they are sentient beings, and we all respond to love. And it's, it's nice to be mindful of that. And just to say thank you. Thank you, mate. We wish you well. We don't know if you're going to make it. We hope you do, and we hope you make a full recovery. Right at the moment, you'd say things look very, very dicey. But we try. We don't give up unless he decides it's time to fly. So, thank you, Josh, for helping me and being the cameraman and uh, giving me permission to put all this up on video and uh, YouTube or wherever it ends up they're helping others around the world in the future. Uh, great service, thank you. Thank you.